All right, look, guys, I am very, very excited to talk to you about today's electric vehicle startup, Aptera, mainly because I think they're promising some really exciting things and no one else is talking about it. Like, it's flying under the radar and I don't see anybody reporting on these insane specs. Maybe it's too good to be true, but if you start looking at some of the numbers and some of the methods they're going through to achieve these numbers, it actually starts to make a little bit of sense and it's even believable. So the main reason I'm excited to talk to you about this very bizarre, odd-looking vehicle, which is technically classified as a motorcycle, but you can drive it without a helmet. It still has an enclosed cabin, you still drive it with a steering wheel and pedals, so it drives like a car, but yes, it does have three wheels. Aptera, in case you're curious, is Greek for wingless flight, because when you're looking at this thing from certain vehicles, it kind of just looks like it's hovering, but the goal of Aptera is to make the most energy-efficient electric vehicles in the world, and they're willing to do some drastic things to make that possible, and I think that's why I like them a lot. If you watch my videos on this channel, you're aware I'm interested in weird and bizarre designs that allow vehicles to become more affordable and more efficient, and that's what excites me the most about Aptera, is they're promising their base model to be $25,900 and still be capable of going 250 miles on a charge. I don't know if you guys have been looking around at the EV market right now, but finding a 25 k electric vehicle that can go 250 miles on a charge is not that common. And the fact that, yeah, it's a two-door, two-seater, so this is not going to be a Model 3 competitor or a replacement for really any vehicle that's been used for families or transporting more than two people. But a lot of cars on the road today are still just transporting one to two people at a time. And the fact that you get around 20 cubic feet of cargo space with this thing means that for a lot of people out there, particularly those who don't have kids or don't need to drive that many people around, this could be one of the most energy efficient ways to get yourself around, mainly because of something else the Aptera is doing that I'm really, really excited to talk about. They're aiming for it to be almost completely solar powered. So every single Aptera, even the base model, has a solar roof on it, which can get you up to 16 miles of charge per day, which may seem like a lot, but the truth is, because of its extremely aerodynamic shape, if you're just checking out the design from the side, you'll notice it almost looks perfectly like like a teardrop, it's like rain falling from the sky. So it has an extremely low drag coefficient, just barely over 0.11, meaning that it cuts through the air like butter, and that results in the vehicle not having to use very much energy to propel itself forward. On the base model, it's using a 100 kilowatt motor, which is definitely a bit underpowered compared to something like a Tesla, but when you're moving such a light vehicle, because they're aiming for this thing to be below 2,000 pounds, you don't have to use as much energy to go fast which is why even on the base models, they're promising zero to 60 speeds in around five and a half seconds. There is a version that will actually add a motor to the back wheel as well, and that's where you can see zero to 60 times go under four seconds, so it's still going to be very fast and very speedy, but at the same time using an extremely small amount of energy while also not breaking the bank. And another exciting add-on that they're now showing on the reservation page, in case you're curious, yes, they are taking $100 refundable reservations, so obviously this is a startup, so a lot of these specs could be bogus. They could end up over-exaggerating themselves. It's totally possible, so take everything with a grain of salt. But either way, I'll save my reasons for believing them for the end of the video. But in their checkout page, they're offering the option for a solar hood and a solar rear hatch, which together would be an additional $900 add-on. And once you have the combination of the solar roof, the solar hatch, and the solar hood, they're saying that you could get about 40 miles of range added if your car is parked somewhere are sunny, which I'm a big fan of because where I live, it's very, very sunny and I do not drive 40 miles a day. So they're calling this kind of one of the first never charge EVs and unless you're going on road trips and you're basically just going to use the Aptera for everyday driving, it's possible it could be completely self-powered and you don't even have to plug it in. How insanely cool would that be for a second? Let's just appreciate that for a moment. The idea of driving around with no emissions exactly where you need to go, you know, the average US driver drives around 30 miles a day. So if this is able to get 40, then that allows you to use the air conditioner and that kind of thing. And you get exactly where you need to go and you don't even have to pay for the electric bill at your house going up for charging the EV. Of course, when you go on a road trip or something, yeah, you will have to. But the other nice perk of the batteries being so energy efficient and getting such a long range out of such a tiny battery is you can charge it pretty quickly with a standard 110 outlet. So the exact same power plug you use to charge your phone can charge 
boost the Aptera up to like 13 miles an hour, which with a full-size electric vehicle, it'd be a bit harder to get your range to go up that quickly. And if you're charging at a standard, you know, DC fast charging location, you can get hundreds of miles added to your range within 10 minutes because again, this is aiming to be one of the most energy efficient electric vehicles out there, which means they're promising they can get 10 miles out of every kilowatt hour in the battery pack, which is insanely good. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the production model doesn't quite hit that, but I still think even shooting for these numbers is impressive because that means they can achieve a 250 mile range with a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the insanely amazing specification is that with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, now keep in mind that model is going to be closer to $50,000, but with that battery, you'd be able to achieve a 1,000 mile range, which no one else in the electric vehicle space is even talking about 1,000 miles. That's over 1,600 kilometers, by the way. That's just not even up for discussion. No one would even think of needing to go that far on a single charge. But if you look at how simple the manufacturing process is for the Aptera, the main body only has four parts. And of course, they get to save on manufacturing by using a lower power motor and less wheels. You don't have four. And of course, a very simple and minimal interior, obviously paying a little bit of homage to the Model 3 interior. You can tell they took some inspiration from Tesla for sure. But I'm not complaining about that because I love the Tesla interiors and I like having a minimal clean looking design and the fact that you can still achieve that and have, you know, a 15 inch multi-touch display in there for all of your navigation and monitoring your speed and that kind of thing while still having an extremely more affordable version of a vehicle because if the range estimates are true, this vehicle can go the same distance as a standard range plus Model 3 for almost $13,000 less. So that's quite a huge cost savings and the Model 3 is not going to have any solar packages that you can take advantage of. So yes, in conclusion, talking about all these great specifications and also I just want to say the upgraded middle ground options look amazing too because for an extra $4,000 at just under 30 grand, they're saying that version with the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack could go 400 miles. So we're talking a 400 mile range EV that's less than $30,000. That's just insanity to the point that I'm sure a lot of you just don't believe it, which is fair because this company has yet to deliver any products to consumers, but they're doing a few things that keep them apart from falling into the same category as Nikola for someone like me, because as you guys know, I despise Nikola and how they handled their business, but that's not what I see Aptera doing here. For one, they have a working functional prototype that they're showing footage of. I even went over the clips to make sure they're not just using footage of it rolling downhill. It's definitely self-propelled, it's definitely driving itself, and they have a prototype that is functionally working. And the other thing to keep in mind about Aptera is they're not exactly new. They've been around since 2006, and they were actually liquidated in 2011 because of lack of funding. And basically their co-founders were really, really excited to bring the Aptera to market, even got as far as getting their vehicle on the Jay Leno show. But because they couldn't get enough money together, they were unable to mass produce the vehicle, which is a bit of a bummer. And you hate to see an EV startup go out that way, but it is difficult. It is challenging to bring a vehicle, especially one this complicated and this different and unique to the mass markets. So they tried, they weren't able to make it happen, but they received some private funding and did some crowdfunding back in 2019 and have now secured a few million dollars and surpassed their quota on their Wii funding page. So now they have the resources, they have the money to start mass producing this thing. And this is where a lot of the R&D has gone in and they're trying to get ready for it to be mass producible. In fact, they're even working with Sandy Monroe, who does does a lot of work with smaller companies and teaching them how to scale their product and how to best handle mass production. So I have a lot of faith in Sandy Monroe and I like that they're going to him. That's something I would recommend for a smaller company like this because it's such a niche part of the market. You know, the United States is not a big fan of three wheeled vehicles, especially small ones that are only two seaters. So this is not going to be a, you know, multi hundred thousand vehicle market demand, but they're saying that they want to have around 40,000 units being built by 2024 and perhaps 20,000 units being built in 2022. But the initial deliveries of the Aptera, they want to achieve at some point in 2021. So I wish them the best. And the other thing I appreciate is they're not a publicly traded company like Nikola was. So it's not like the CEO is going to get on everybody's channel and tell everyone to buy their stock because it's just like Tesla stock. No, they're not publicly traded, which in my opinion for EV startups, it's best to stay not publicly traded as long as possible. And they've secured the funding
everything they need and they have a functional prototype so I just feel like we should give this company a lot of credit even if the specs are seemingly too good to be true if you just look into how they're building these things and how they're stuffing these giant batteries in them and how little power they're able to draw and how energy efficient they can be plus the solar packages and the idea of driving around a vehicle that's self-powered is just incredible to me and being able to get 13 miles an hour of charge with a standard 110 outlet if you use DC fast charging you could get up to 500 miles an hour because it can make great use of every single amount of juice that's in the battery I think we got to give this company some credit keep your eyes on them obviously reserve at your own risk but if you want to feel free to use my referral code because I would like to let them know that I sent you because I would love to get in talk with some of the chairman and the CEO of this company and talk about how they're scaling production and I just think that out of all the EV startups out there this one by far is one of the most interesting ones because they're going for really affordable but still driving you know a car like experience and I'm a fan of non-traditional unique designs in the extreme energy efficiency is I think something more companies should be looking into so anywho let me know what you guys think of Aptera thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one take care